I know what you're gonna say. Didn't we already see this truck? We did. This week though, we're gonna dive into something that I've been promising to talk about for a while. We're gonna talk about this one piece of plastic and does it make us safer? Or does it have the exact opposite effect? Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Josh again with Richfield. I want to thank you for tuning in again this week. This one's one that I've promised for a little while and I'm kind of excited to get into it. We've already reviewed this truck, but one thing we didn't talk much about this was the Bendix adaptive cruise control setup on this truck. It's that black piece of plastic that kind of lets you know what's going on up front here. Now, trucking's an industry that's steeped in tradition, but technology has really started to come into the, the industry and disrupt things. Now, many people have questions if that's good or bad, and people are looking at it from different angles. What I really want to try and do is, I want to dive in today, let's take a look at things, and as a driver, let's look at what it's going to do for you. Is this going to help to make you safer, or is this going to lull you into a sleep and suddenly you're the terror on the road? There's a number of different things that we're going to need to look at, so let's just dive straight into this one, shall we? Now, as far as the truck goes, I'm not really going to talk too much about the truck today because, like I said, we've already done a pretty good review of this truck. I will link that below, and I'll probably put a card somewhere. Somewhere. I'll put a card here if you want to, if you want to see more about this truck. Great truck, 2020 T680, MX Power. Pack R12 speed transmission, some good information on this one in there too. I really like this truck. All that being said, give me a second. I'm gonna set the cameras up. We're gonna get on the road. I think I got everything recording. I'm not framed up very well there, but hey, we're not gonna be paying as much attention to that. Where's the seatbelt? Yes, I have the heated seat on. It's one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite things in life, actually. I know I've stated this before, guys, but one of the things that I have to say that I truly, truly love is in this transmission is A, how fast it accelerates, and B, how smooth it is. Um, it does not shift like an automatic in terms of constant torque, but the let off in between gears, it, there, there's no jerkiness to it. It's very, very smooth. So, Let's get on the freeway. So where we're gonna drive here is just a strip of 77, like any other two lane freeway. So as I'm going down the road here, it's telling me I have 1.5 seconds from the car in front of me. Now it's lit up white. The way this is set is it realizes that that's a comfortable distance for me. Now, if I start to get closer, it'll light up orange and then beep at me. And in fact, if I get just a little bit further away here, we'll slow down just a hair. We're at two seconds, 2.1 seconds, 2.2. All of this is with the cruise control off. So this is me manually driving the truck. We're out to three seconds now, it's still white. It's, it's happy. It's perfectly happy about where we're at. 
And so am I. When you look at where this car is, especially I mean, right now I'm running Bobtail, but if I had a full load or anything like that out back, this is plenty of distance. And especially now we're not in heavy traffic, so not a big deal. Once we get out past four seconds, as you can see, the display turns off. Now I've got a car, a couple of cars merging in from the left. Saw the first one, it saw the second one. Once again, we're at 1.2 seconds. Now this vehicle looks a little sketchy. I was looking for someone to follow to say, okay, let's test some of this out. But this looks like a sketchy setup. So we're just gonna, yeah. We're, we're just gonna go ahead and go on around. In fact, that's a really sketchy setup. Once again, what was interesting about that is that I had been one second, 1.2 seconds behind other cars. So why did it beep for me with that one? Well, the reason why it beeped for me with that one is it sensed that I was gaining on that vehicle very quickly. So it the computer system realized that I was catching that vehicle and that something needed to be done about it. In the other instances, it realized that the vehicle was going faster than I was and going further away. So it knew that that distance was expanding. The system seems to recognize whether I'm getting closer or whether something's going further away and tries to react accordingly. Now, in the manual, one of the biggest things that it says is that this system is no substitute for a driver. It's meant to assist a driver. It is not meant to be a driver. So keep that very much in mind. So now it's picked up that vehicle in front of me and says it's seven tenths of a second ahead of me. Eight tenths. But it's not angry with me right now because it senses that that vehicle's going faster than I am and that that vehicle's going away from me. was really hoping for more traffic. When was the last time you heard someone say that? People don't say that. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to turn on the cruise control. You can see that come up there on the screen. I'm going to set it. 65 is a speed limit. It realizes we're 2.3 seconds in front of the car behind, or in front of, behind the car in front of us. So let's see how this goes. What's interesting is, is as I look, I've got the cruise control set at 65 miles an hour. We're now doing 62, 61, because we're maintaining this 2.6 seconds from the car in front of us. Is that slower than we can go here? Yeah. See, now we sped back up to 64 because they sped back up. So is it slower? A little bit, yes. But the nice thing about it is, is the truck takes care of this and it does it in a way that you don't really notice it. It doesn't jerk to slow down. The way it eases off the throttle, it, it's it very much eases off and on the throttle. There's no snap to it. There's no jerk to it. There's a really good buffer in this. So now one of the vehicles moved out of our way, as you can see there. We're back up to 65. Now we've got some traffic merging in from the right here. I can't really get over, so let's see what happens with this. This person's not paying attention. They're gonna speed up. So the truck sees them, but once again, we don't slow down because that vehicle sped off. They opened up a good gap. Now, I'll be honest with you, I was a bit leery on letting that happen as it did. I knew that truck was going to come over right in front of me and it just wasn't a comfortable situation it will adapt for those types of traffic situations around you, which is great. In a situation like that, I'm not gonna let it just do its thing and I'm gonna shut it off here for this tow truck driver because hey, I always try and look out for the wrecker guys. And 
And now because I'm so close to that guy and was gaining on him, got grumpy with me. And it makes sense for it to. When you look at where I'm following him now, this is a comfortable distance. Is there a chance that a car is going to dive in here? Yes. But even if I was splitting the distance, there's always a chance someone's going to dive in there. I always think it's funny. This past weekend, it cooled off a little bit. This dude's still in shorts and a t-shirt. It's like 57 degrees. I'm done with shorts and a t-shirt, unfortunately. Once again, I'm behind someone that's doing just a hair below the 65 mile an hour speed limit. The 65 is what I have the truck set to. So we're maintaining a 2.3 to 2.5 second gap behind this person. We're going between 63, 64 miles an hour right now. You can tell it sees that car right in front of us because now we're down to basically 60 miles an hour. Once again, is this the fastest way through? No, I've got a pretty clear left lane. It wouldn't take much for me to get out and go around them. Now we're all the way down to 56. Now what's interesting is this is flat ground. I'm running bobtail, so it's not weight causing me to do this. It's the cruise control system. But it's allowing me to maintain the cruise control being on and stay very aware of what's going on. I can look the mirrors, I can check things like that, and it's not gonna put me closer to that car in front of me. To me, that's valuable. This doesn't allow me to sleep. This doesn't allow me that lull time. I still have to be just as vigilant as the stuff going on around me. But I can take that extra tenth of a second to check my mirrors, to look around, to see what traffic's doing way out ahead, to see what traffic's doing behind me. I can take that extra time knowing that I'm not catching that car in front of me quickly. That is a big value to me. Something else that we'll talk about here while we're on the road is this automated transmission. Some guys are saying it, it's slow, it shifts too soon. What I don't think a lot of people realize is that these engines are meant to run at a much lower RPM. Now, I don't know if you guys just caught that. The truck coasted on that hill. It put itself in neutral, and that's why it came up green there. That's one of those fuel, fuel efficient things where if it can just coast down a hill and maintain its speed, it will put itself in neutral, it will let the engine idle, and you'll just roll. Because why should we spin the motor if we don't have to? Same thing with shifting early. Why should we spin the motor if we don't have to? Now we're on Route 21 right now. I have the speedometer, I have the cruise control set to 60 miles an hour. As you guys can see, we've got pretty clear road in front of us. I've got someone getting ready to pass me here on the left. This road, I stick to whatever the speed limit is. No cars ever do. But in a truck, you want to stick to the speed limit. The uh, DOT has been known to, uh, should we call this a fundraiser? I've really got to say, whenever I get in, we've had a number of these trucks. They're the 510 horsepower, 12 speed pack car transmission trucks. just so smooth and so effortless and so quiet. I, I, I could drive this all day. So now that we're back, we have a couple of things that uh, we need to talk about, don't we? Is this coming for your job? Are the robots coming for your job? The number of miles I have in these trucks are limited in terms of using the adaptive cruise control. In the same sense, I am very comfortable in saying no. Next week, the week after, the week after that, the year after that, the robots are not coming for your job. Now, if that's the case, what use is this system? 
there's two big things that I see with this system that are just added benefits and huge to that. Number one is management. This allows you to manage a number of different things because it has taken throttle management and it's taken that on for you. There's situations where we know we just get stuck and just have to follow traffic. This will do that for you. It, it manages that for you. It allows you to focus on the traffic around you rather than just what's exactly in front of you. It's gonna maintain that distance for you. To me, it does it much better than most drivers will. It's a great thing. On top of it is efficiency. The big thing that I would say I notice, in fact, I'm gonna say I don't notice it because it's so smooth. If you're behind someone and the truck slows down or if that person leaves and the truck speeds up, it does it so smoothly, so fluidly, that unless you're looking at the speedometer, you're never gonna notice. Now that to me, that fluidity, that, that smoothness, that's what everyone's striving for. That's what gives you fuel efficiency. That's what gives you parts longevity. To me, that's a huge bonus in of its own. So yeah, those two reasons in itself, I can see how this system goes on a truck and pays for itself. On top of that, the safety that it adds in accident prevention is huge. I haven't had to test that. Frankly, I don't wanna test that. I'll leave that for some of the pro, wouldn't they be amateurs? I'll leave that for other people to test. In this, one of the things that I really wanna talk about in this, one of the things that I really want to say is when you read that owner's manual, it specifically says there are things that it may not see on the road. You still have to pay attention. You cannot tie a rope around the wheel, go back and make a sandwich. It doesn't work that way. What it does do is it allows you to put your focus on other areas of driving while it manages the throttle for you. Like I said, to me, it's a big thing. The applications over the road for this are great. So guys, I promise this video, and I know I'm gonna get some pushback on this. I know there's gonna be some, out of you, some of you out there that say, there's no reason for this, you should never use it, trucks should never have cruise control, whatever. I get that. There's some guys out there that still think a rotary phone was where we should have stopped also. I don't get that part. In all this, do me a favor. What are your experiences with it? And please don't give me hearsay, because I've heard a ton of, well, a friend of a friend of a friend knew a guy that heard of a guy that did this. What's your specific experience with this? Do that. Put that in the comments below for me. What's your thoughts on this system? After hearing kind of my take, I'd love to hear what your input is on that. There's something else you want to see like i always say put that in the comments below too i am working through some of the stuff I'm excited to get to a lot of it as always if you think i earned it give me the thumbs up on this one stay safe out there keep it rubber side down yeah So guys, I fully expect some pushback on this video. I get it. Not everyone's comfortable with something like this. And there's certain situations where, even as I showed, where I wasn't comfortable with it and I needed to make sure that I took the reins again. I totally understand that. Overall, I think this is a great tool. And if you learn how to use it correctly, I think there's some huge benefits to it. Some really great ways for it to put the money back in your bank account, which is, is I think why we all do this, right? So what are your thoughts on it? And what are your specific thoughts on it? And most of all, what are your experiences with it? And don't tell me that so-and-so knew so-and-so knew so-and-so had a problem with this or heard of a guy that had a problem with this. 
What are your actual experiences? I'd love to hear them. What are your actual questions about the system too? I'd love to see what we might be able to answer for you on this. Put that all in the comments below. If there's something that I missed, something you want to see, by all means put that in there too. Guys, do me a favor, make sure you're subscribed. Hit the notifications bell because you want to know when we're coming out with the next video. As always, give me the thumbs up if you think I deserved it. Stay safe out there. Keep it rubber side down. I will catch you. Yeah, you. On the flip side. <laughs>